Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about an easy problem from lead code. The problem name is sum of all subsets ZOR total. So the problem statement goes like this, that the ZOR total of any array is defined as the bitwise ZOR of all its elements. Okay, now what your overall problem statement is that for a given array, you have to find out the sum of the ZOR totals of all the subset of that particular array. So you just have to find the subset, all the subset for that given array. And then among all the subsets, you have to find out the ZOR total. Okay, from the subsets, you will get like separate arrays. Now you will just find out the ZOR of all the elements in that particular subset and just add a total of all of them and just return the answer. That's it. Now, because as you can see in the constraint, n is pretty small. Okay, like the total number of uh, the total length of the nums is 12 only. So you can just do it in a very beautiful way. Just find out all the different subsets and also for every subset, find out its ZOR of all the elements. That's it. Now, how can you find out the subsets? Now, there are multiple approaches. You can use bit, bit mask also for here. By bit mask, I also tell you with a small example. Let's say that you have an array of size, let's say three, or let's say four. So two, three, five, eight. So you have an, you can say array of size four. Now, what you'll do eventually is that to find out all the subsets, you will make a mask for it. By mask, I mean that you will make a number that represent this particular array. And if you want to take, let's say, 2 and 5 as a subset, so you will mark 1, 1, and all others are 0. So this is one of the numbers. Now, to find out all the possible subsets, what you can do is that you can iterate over from 1 till 2 to the power of 4, all the numbers. If you just iterate over all elements from 1 to 2 to the power of 4, which also means that this is so what you can do is that you have to just find all the numbers and when you iterate over all the numbers what you'll do is that this will form a 4 bit number okay so which means that it is a 4 bit number and it will iterate over all the possible like combinations you can say which is like 0 0 0 1 then 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 like 0 0 1 1 and so on so different combinations different subsets which means that either in the first case I will just take just eight. The next case I'll take five. The next case I, I will take five eight. So these are the bit mask for this array. Okay. And then you can use this bit mask to find out all the different subsets. And while you are building the subset, you will just find out the ZOR also and just add the ZOR of all the different subsets. And that's it. Pretty much simple. Because the consider small, you will do this in a very good first order. So what we'll do is that. This is total in which you will find out the total. This is the total length of the array. Now you have to do a bitwise, you can say iterate over all the possible subsets. So you can generate the possible subsets from 1 till 2 to the power of n. You can just generate 2 to the power of n like this also. 1 left shifted n times, which is just equivalent to 2 to the power of n. Okay. Now you will do the for loop over till that time. Now what you will do is like for every subset, this is used to generate all the subsets. So for every subset, you will find out the current total ZOR. So for that, you will be storing it here. Now you have a particular state. You can generate the state from whatever I you are on, which I've told you. These numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, has different bitwise, you can say, uh, representation. And that bitwise representation actually represents the bitwise state. And the state is corresponding to a subset in that particular array. So what you can do is that when you have this number, that is I, you have to extract out every bit of it. And from that bit, you will Tell that whether I will take the ith number in the array or not for that corresponding subarray. So what you will do is that you will iterate over all the bits because it's a n bit number. You will iterate over all the bits one by one. That is also representing the n state array. Okay. So when you're iterating over every element in the array that is of length n, you will check that whether I will take it or not take it depending upon the bit that is set in i. So how you can check out? You will do an AND operation of i with left shifted one this number of times. This eventually just check out whether the ith bit, okay, or not sorry, ith, gth bit. Okay, so in the ith number, whether the gth bit is set or not. Okay, if the gth bit is set, which eventually means that I have to take the gth element in the in the array, and for every element I will just check out whether I will take it or not take it in the subarray, like current subarray. If I want to take it, what I will do, this will return true, if this will, or actually this will return like positive number, if it returns a positive number, 
what I will do is that I will do a ZOR of that particular number with the current total. That is just used to build the ZOR of the current subset. After doing a for loop, after, after doing a for loop of, uh, you can say, over all the current numbers in the array and forming out the ZOR of the current subset uh, using this i, I have the current subset. Now, if you add this current subs, you can, not the subset, sorry, the ZOR, the ZOR of this current subset in the total because I want the sum of all the ZORs. Okay, I just add the current total in total, which is eventually the answer. And the end, I will return the answer that is storing out the sum of all the ZORs. So, this is the current ZOR of the current state. You can see current bit mass. And this is adding in the total. And the end, we have a total of all the ZORs and just return number. Okay, pretty much simple. That's the overall logic that so this is doing a for loop. And this is uh, iterating over all the bits. Okay, so this is, let's say, O of N only. But uh, because the consider small, you can do this in a very simple way also. But that's it. Uh, this will eventually just pass out all the diagonal student as well. So that's it. That's the logic and the code part for this particular problem. If you still have any doubts, you can mention in the comment box of this particular problem. I will see you in the next one day coding and bye.